Hi, uh, my name is Ram Krishna Gautam. I'm director of engineering at Altes. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, how the natural language processing or NLP can impact the patient experience and also value-based care. Um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic show us that natural language processing and uh, telehealth technology is not just a fancy trend in the medical industry. This is really important to uh, provide a care to the patient. Um, today, I'm going to talk about some of the top use cases uh, is going on in healthcare industry or is a potential use cases. Uh, one of the use cases is how we can enhance patient experience. I'm going to emphasize this one. Uh, the patient experience is always epicenter. Uh, whatever the te technology you bring it, a transformation, we do that. We always keep a patient empathy, right? Always keep patient in the heart. So whatever we're doing, make sure they get the best experience. So this is really important uh, about how we can improve the patient experience. Um, our healthcare industry is moving towards uh, value-based care from the fee-for-service fee model. Um, this is also one of the change is driving through COVID-19 situation because now people are more worried about their quality of care uh, as compared to the just number of you know patients that they have to visit. So this is a new trend uh, is coming up. Um, and in this new trend um, in value-based care, provider need to create a performance report and care gap report if it's any. And they have to share with the payer or the government agency. Uh, this is one of the, you know, the advantages of value-based model, so they'll get incentive. Um, this also get a, a you know admin effort to the provider because the as I mentioned the provider data eighty percent unstructured, so they have to spend a lot of time to create that report. Um, NLP is a good use case there, right? It can access the all structure, non-structured data, and create a report and share with the peer and the government agencies. These all use case is mostly focused on the medical factor. Um, the last use case is a non-medical factor. Um, and I, I'm going to discuss more detail in subsequent um, slides. But in nutshell, that the, the people's health is impact from the non-medical factor as compared to the medical factor. Those non-medical non factor is called social determinants of health or SDOH. These factors is really important um, to understand how, and once we understand those factors, we really can work on to create a plan to improve the population health. So these are some of the top use cases I'm going to discuss about today. Let's start with the patient experience. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, is the patient is always epicenter. And the first uh, experience is start when the patient wants to schedule an appointment. And if you remember the old time, right, you have to call the doctor office and check the doctor's calendar availability. And you need to check your too because you're busy. Now, we spend a lot of time to just find us, you know, suitable spot where we can see a doctor for 15 or 30 minutes. Now, the technology make help very easy for us. Now, it will connect with the direct providers, EMR, provider system is called EMR, EHR, and pick up and, and get the availability and also connect with your personal calendar. So you can easily find a spot where you can go and see the doctor. This really gonna help, this really helping to the to the patient. When you schedule appointment, there's a there's a lot of back office work is done by the provider, uh, provider team. The first thing they do that check the eligibility. Uh, at present, they basically manually call to the pair, pair to check the eligibility. In this use cases, Basically, what, what the system will do that, it will collect the information from your previous uh, visit and also your previous insurance card you have in the system and automatically call to the payer and check your eligibility. So you, you don't see the out-of-network provider, otherwise you maybe pay out of pocket, right? Um, this is first part is a liability check. Second is the provider office do is called pre-authorization. A nutshell pre-authorization means Provider has to get permission from payer to perform particular service or, or provide a medical device. Um, this is taking this is a time consuming at present. So um, if, for example, you went to provider and see and you want some specialist to see that, 
or any specific process it has to perform. Now you have to go back home and wait for doctors to get a pre-authorized. In this uh, technology, the NPL technology, what it does basically, it collect all the information, all the medical history, medical previous medical record or scan what we have or X-ray and submit to the uh, to the pair, and they can get a real time authorization. So they don't have patient don't have to go home and come back again. They can see the doctor and get a service in the same time. So that's called the pre authorization. This is one of the top use case. Um, the the last use case and this really close to my heart uh, is still we, do, we we still live in the digital age, but uh, when we go to the doctor office sometime we still get a clipboard and uh, with the paper and pencil to fill the information. Now have to fill again all your information, uh, what you already provided. You have to fill again the insurance detail, what you provided uh, last time, right? And you all, when you're scheduling appointment, you already provided why you want for the care. This all information is you have to provide it again. This is really a bad experience. What the technology will do that, gonna collect all the information from your previous visit, provider notes, your conversation with provider and fill this information for you if this really mandatory and this really needed for the compliance point of view. So you don't have to sit there in the waiting room and just filling using the you know paper and pencil to fill that. Um, to avoid this, this is called digital check-in. So all the information populated, uh, it will be check check in for you because after validation, you know, it will check in for you to see the doctor. Now, once you, you, you checked in, the next episode of Scare to Doctor Visit. So uh, definitely, uh, you're really excited to see the doctor. And when doctor come, they, they start, you know, they start having conversation with you. But you will notice that after some time, they're spending more time to typing in their EHR system uh, or you know, other provider system, what they use. Um, the study shows that only 50% of the time they spend um, uh, you know, 50% of time they spend to in, up, updating provider system, and only 25% time they spend to talk with the patient. This really impacting our patient experience because we would like patient would like to her have eye contact with the provider and understand what's the health issues going on and how can they take care. So instead of provider, you know, provider trying their best, but they have to update the provider system right while they are talking. Uh, this is a, this is a here uh, one of the top use cases also that technology will help. What it basically is doing right now is uh, NLP based uh, technology or tools uh, or software is already there in the market. They are basically recording a patient and provider conversation. Um, that mostly a script format, and what they do is that they convert um, that in unstructured and structured format and update in the provider system. That's very easy for the uh, for the provider and the patient, right? Uh, when they have conversation, they can focus on the conversation. They don't have to worry about the updating the provider system. And also after after visit summary, right? Um, once the patient will go home, and they may be forget, right? What the instruction they asked to take care at home. These um, these conversation will also help when they send it to them, so they will understand, you know, what they have to do. That this really huge improvement in their experience. Um, when we go to the doctor, mostly time you you know the doctors share a lot of words, right? The medical term, and we as a normal people may not able to understand, right? And that also uh, a bad experience because we really want to understand what's going on, in, you know, in our health, right? And how we can improve that. There's as uh, NLP is come in the picture, right? The NLP can convert the medical terms to the normal, you know, language form, so you you can understand. Uh, very easily. That's that's called the improving the patient health literacy, right? So patient can understand what's going on in their health and how they they can take care. And this this really a huge factor about the understanding. Uh, definitely, first I'll talk about the in person visit. Now in the current COVID nineteen situation, um, um, you know mostly appointments happening e visit. This force us to start using e visit because of this situation. This really increase the adoption. Um, that's one of the use cases that technology can help when you see the emergency situation coming like this and you will have a continued access to care. So this telehealth adoption is really increased a lot from last one year. Definitely, this may be the continue the same trend in the future, right? 
we can use this technology to provide a care in the remote area. They still, there's a lot of people, uh, they, don't, they don't have access to care because they're living, uh, living in the remote area or they don't have a specialist around that. This is really open a gate for them because the adoption is started so they can get, uh, they can get a care while they stay, staying home. Um, this is also lead up to the other use case what we talk about remote patient monitoring. So think about the scenario, right? When the elderly patient or maybe high risk patient, they discharge from the hospital. Now, in order to they continue to access to care and be healthy, they in, in lot earlier they they have to come to the doctor office, right, and have check ins done again and again. Now, in in this this scenario, the remote patient monitoring basically the, all the vitals like their their blood pressure temperature everything can be seen by the doctor it will collect it and share to doctor so doctor can monitor continuously right and understand what the health is going on so instead of going to the doctor office right doctor can see their they can understand their vitals they understand their health concern they understand what's going on uh, at uh, remotely this really reduces a huge burden from the system because this not only increases the healthcare cost, but it's also increased more chances for the high risk patient to get more more issues like you know the infection and all, and also it free up time for the provider to take care of new patient. So this this is one of the use case is coming up in the industry. I know a lot of a lot of adoption is start coming up. People are thinking more to use, but this really open a open a door. A combination of the telehealth and the home care. Uh, now I, I'm going to switch to other topic. What I mentioned is a value-based care, right? Um, value-based care is really um, going on right now in the industry. There, there's a multiple reasons. The one reason is that because we really want to improve a care quality and reduce the healthcare cost. This is the only way. This is one of the way to do that. And and government un understand that government also emphasizing that half of the Medicaid and commercial contract will be value based care by 2025. So this is really huge, huge push from the government also, and also from the consumer because consumer want to con control their spending and they want more quality of care. So it's kind of multiple factors going towards the uh, value based care. I just want to take a minute and talk about what it means for uh, you know what it means for the people. Um, fee for services and value based care. Uh, fee for service means that you will doctor will get paid based on each service performed, like number of time you visit to office your, or your uh, test is done. This is their the the way of the reimbursement. Um, in value based care, they definitely get uh, paid based on the visit, but their more incentive is come with the quality of care. Their focus is shift is more preventive care. care. Or I can say the well care, wellness care as compared to the sick care. This is a new addition is there in the in the thought process, uh, more preventive. So how doctor will emphasize and may get a plan how to make sure that their patient is uh, get a good quality, they are healthy because they're gonna get incentive based on that. Um, this this really a, a thought process, right? How we can improve the patient care. Now, in order to get a reimbursement from the payer or government agency, provider has to create a report, um, those called provider performance report, and also they need to create a care gap report, um, right? If any any gap is there, and they have to share with payer and the government agencies. Now, as I mentioned earlier, also the data, the clinical data, eighty percent stored in unstructured format. There's a lot of manual efforts or burdens added to provider to create that report so they can get a reimbursement. Um, this is one of the use case also for natural language processing. Um, natural language processing can scan the uh, record unstructural like provider notes, patient and provider conversation. Um, there are some messages in the patient portal or provider portal. Everything can be, can be collected and also structural data like updated in the provider EHR system right and create a report automatically and send it to payer or or government agency this will help to improve their revenue definitely and reduce a lot of admin costs and efforts so 
this is one of the use case. Um, it will also help to, um, to increase the value-based care adoption, right? One of the reasons always, you know, burden for the adoption is that if you add more work, its adoption get decreased, right? When we get help like language, natural language processing, this is really help for the provider to do the more adoption. Now, once episode of care is done, um, provider as a normal process right now, uh, provider submit a claims to the pair or, or the agency, the third party agency or government agencies. Um, in order to submit the claims, um, provider hire a back office staff or third party agency. And their job is to read the provider notes, uh, check the patient medical history, understand the results, and create and identify the medical code and those medical codes submit in the claims because provider get reimbursement based on those medical code. Right now, this process is manual and also the error prone because mostly time or, or maybe I can say the 50, 60% time we miss that code is really impacted the patient history. So this natural language processing, what it does that it can scan you know, the patient's 10 year history and identify the clinical code and, and create a claims automatically. Um, this is not only gonna be done in a second, but it also become more efficient. It's gonna be follow the compliance with the pair and third party agencies. This will also increase the revenue because right now, and the current post for simple claims and office bids, providers teams gonna take a day or two, a complex claim, maybe a month to create a claims, right? This is happening in same day uh, or maybe same minute, right? So this also helped to increase their adoption and also that will increase their revenue. So this kind of the, is called computer assistant coding, like system will create a, uh, create a code for, for the claims instead of manual effort. This really, again, is improving the, um, the, the provider performance and also reducing the admin costs and, uh, and effort. All these factors um, I talk about is a medical term. Um, only th those impact 10% of people's health. And this is really a surprise uh, for a lot of people. A um, lot of studies going on right now and are already showing that the 80 to 90% of people's health is impact because of non-medical reason. Um, non-medical reason is like, what's your childhood experience look like? Uh, what so support you have, social support, your community support, how your empl employment switch is going on? How your you know family in uh, family income is there? How far are you staying the access to health care? Do you have access to the you know healthy food or not? These all social, economic, and environmental condition is impacting our uh, people's life, and those are impacting right now eighty to ninety percent of these factor. So it's not a small number, and we really focusing only the ten percent so far. So industry is moving towards to focus this 80 to 90% factor that's impacting the people life. Here also, uh, it's very complex to identify those factors. So we call this social determinants of health, s 2 h It's very difficult to identify the issue. The reason is that because these non-medical factor, they did not store in the structural format. They are scattered across so many places. They are scattered in your uh, provider notes. They are scattered in the patient portal. They are scattered in the provider portal. They are scattered in the message capability. What you do, you know, with, between a parent provider. So these kind of all this is all places scattered, right? Those information, some maybe information is not documented also so far. Like what's your what's your you know support from your social, right? Uh, what's your support from your education system? So these factors, something has to be documented, and and that will help us to identify the SDOH issue. Once we identify this SDOH issue, and natural language processing, one of the best use case for the SDOH, where it can scan across all these sources and identify the SDOH. Once we have SDOH, what provider is gonna do that, they're gonna create a plan, care plan for individuals, because they will understand where they, they need to focus, right? Which population group or which patient they have to focus. And not only the medical terms, non-medical way, right? So they can provide more resources to improve individual individual health or population health. One of the examples I was saying that you know if they don't have access to care, like they live living far, 
Is it something we can provide a transportation to them, right? Or if they want to see the doctor, right? And one of the, you know, the uh, want to see the doctor, one of the parents, single parents want to see the doctor and they have a small child. If you, if you provide a child care for them, they can go to easily to see the doctor. If they will not provide a child care, this will impact access to care. So these all factors is really important to understand what basically is stopping people to have access to care. So these so social determinants of factor, you will see a lot right on upcoming trend where we're gonna spend a lot of um, the technology and the effort and the money to identify the SDOS factor. This will help improve our population health. So thanks for listening for me in this, uh, all the use cases, what we talk about. Um, what, one of the things I wanna echo before you know, I end that, um, natural language processing or any technology is really useful when we have epicenter of the patient. This is really important. I'm gonna emphasize that. Sometimes we, we go too much on the technology, we forget the patient empathy, we forget the provider empathy. So just keep in mind that technology is gonna solve the problem. The new transformation is the technology-driven business transformation. So make sure whenever the technology we use, make sure this give a good patient experience, it reduce burden for the provider, that will, they, they will not burn out and they will continue to provide access to care. Thank you. Thanks for listening for me.